Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here. I'm gonna run through a quick tutorial on a method for distressing the edges of typography in Photoshop. It's a very simple approach, but I do use variations of this technique all the time in my work. So here's something I worked on for a Netflix special and it's subtle, but you can see the letters have just a little bit of a lived in look. Here's something heavier, but still using the same technique. I was working on the trailer for this Warcraft movie. If you're a gamer, maybe you'll remember that movie. I don't blame you if you don't. Anyways, there are honestly a ton of different ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you my favorite easy technique and the way I go about it, so let's jump right into it. I'll start with a document that has just a couple of layers of live type, and there's some grungy paper just for background texture here. It's one of the free textures from texturelabs.org, which I'll link to below. By the way, I'm working at HD resolution, just keeping it simple, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So I'll move through this quickly, but I'll include step-by-step -step instructions below that you can reference. I'm gonna start by hovering over the layer icon of one of the type layers, and I'm gonna command click to make a selection in the shape of the letters. Then I'm gonna hold shift to add to the selection, and I'll do the same on all these type layers. Holding shift, I'm gonna command click on each of these. Then I'm gonna turn off all those type layers, and with the selection still active, I'm going into my fill and adjustment layers menu down here and clicking on solid color. And I'll make that a black solid. So that created a solid layer and automatically added a mask in the shape of the active selection. I find this is the easiest way to manipulate the shapes of letters because now I can just apply all kinds of filters and adjustments to this mask and they'll change the shape of the letters. So first what I'm gonna do is kind of run these through the washing machine. I'm gonna use a filter I use all the time to roughen things up. It's in filters, pixelate, crystallize. And I'm gonna set that just to five pixels. All right, then I'm gonna mush this together with another tool I like called Select and Mask, which I can find here in the Properties tab when the mask is selected, or I can right click on the mask and go to Select and Mask. And I'm gonna be using this Global Refinement section down here. You can experiment quite a bit here, but what I'm gonna do is just drag this smooth slider up a little bit, and the contrast one as well, and that just kinda averages all these shapes together. So, okay. And that right there can sometimes be enough to create a more natural weathered look. It's probably the only thing I did on that Anthony Jeselnik type I pulled up earlier. But let me blend that with the paper a little bit. I'm gonna change the layers blending mode to color burn. And then I can double click on the solid color icon and I'll change the color to more of a turquoise kind of a color. All right, so that's kind of cool, but let's push this a little further and I'll show you how you can really dig into this technique. I'm just gonna keep manipulating this mask and for now, I'll really focus on that crystallized filter. I'm gonna apply that again and this time crank it up to maybe 20. And then immediately after I apply it, I'm gonna use Edit Fade Crystallize or Command Shift F. And I'm gonna set this to screen so the filter will only add white to the mask and I'll bring the opacity back to 60%. All right, and let's do that again, crystallize, and this one I'll turn way up to 60. Then Command Shift F to fade that, set it to screen again, and here I'll just bring the opacity all the way down to 15%, creating a few subtle, big, chunky ink bleeds. All right, why not one more time? I'll go to crystallize and set it to five, and no fade on that one, that just roughens everything up a little bit. So that's looking cool, and that's really the premise of this whole technique, is using the mask to give you a place to experiment with the edges of the type. And it's really just a jumping off point. I hope it will be useful for you. Please do hit that like button. I've got lots more little techniques and some more intensive tutorials on the way, so be sure to subscribe. Grab some free stuff at texturelabs.org. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.